you have four right angles. All I have is a pen up there in the flower pot. Everyone's taking all my pencils. All right, and then just like yesterday, you have your markers out on your table. Go ahead and pick a marker. And go ahead and circle number one in that color. So now we know that anything on our rectangle that's in red represents this property. Okay, so if in that same color, if I wanted to show that I had four right angles in my picture, what would you draw? Uh, your little squares. Mm -hmm. So here are your four right angles. It's a lot? Four right angles? Oh, yes. So you won't have to memorize them. You'll be given them. Okay. Your second property is that your diagonals, which remind me what a diagonal is. Uh, they cross through your shape. So this is a diagonal. This is a diagonal. In a rectangle, your diagonals are congruent. In a rectangle, your diagonals are congruent. So good, just get this out from yesterday. That'll be good. Come. Yeah, it's in the uh, black Tuesday folder. Other one, black one, blue. There you go. All right, and just like yesterday, grab a different color. Go ahead and circle number two in that color. All right, and so just to show that the diagonals are congruent, we're just going to go ahead and shade them in that color. So that diagonal is congruent to that diagonal. So those are the two properties that are specific to a rectangle. It only occurs with a rectangle. But true or false, a rectangle is a parallelogram. That's actually true because the definition of a parallelogram is a shape that has these two sides parallel and these two sides parallel. Thank you. Is that happening on a rectangle where these two are parallel and these two are parallel? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it is a parallelogram. A rectangle is a parallelogram. So because it's a parallelogram, I'm going to go ahead and add one more property to rectangle. I'm going to say that I can use all five parallelogram properties. So not only can I use these additional two, but I can use everything that I learned yesterday as well on a rectangle because a rectangle is a parallelogram. And I know this is a dumb question, but remind me, a right angle is how many degrees? <coughs> okay, I thought you said it with such a straight face. I was like, oh my gosh, I have failed as a Yarl's teacher. <laughs> All right, any questions on the rectangle properties? Moving on to rhombus. Does anyone remember anything about a rhombus, like any of the properties? No. Y'all learned it at some point in time. Might have been like a decade ago. Not a decade, but a while ago. No. I was just seeing what y'all remembered. So probably the only one that y'all could have remembered was that a rhombus has four congruent sides. Well, now you know. So a rhombus has four congruent sides. Right. And again, grab a color, circle number one in that color. And then in that color, how would you show that you have four congruent sides on that picture? Draw your tick marks, yep. So anytime that you see tick marks, that means that everything with that amount of tick marks is the same. So I know that all four of those sides are the same. Okay. All right, your second property is that your diagonals are perpendicular, which what does perpendicular mean? Someone remind me. So they make, almost, they do intersect and they form a certain amount of degrees. 
Uh, they form a 90 degree angle. That's what perpendicular means. Whenever you see that diagonals are perpendicular, that means that they intersect at a 90 degree angle. So again, just like yesterday, grab a different color and circle number two in that color. Okay. Um, how would you show that the diagonals are perpendicular? Anyone? What? How would you show that the diagonals are perpendicular? So perpendicular means they form what kind of angle? 90 degree angle. So Alex and Mahmood, what would I draw in my picture then? 90 degree angle. Where? In the middle. In the middle, yes sir. So in the middle, where your diagonals cross, you have four right angles there. That's what it means for your diagonals to be perpendicular. They form 90 degree angles. Okay. And your last property is that your diagonals bisect the angles. Remind me, what does it mean to bisect? Not just cross, but whenever they cross, they do what to the angle? Split it in half. Okay. So grab your last color, circle number three in that color. How do you show that angles are congruent? Um, by putting the diagonals in the arcs, yep. So I would say these two angles are congruent. These two angles are congruent. All right, boys, we should be writing. These two angles are congruent, and these two angles are congruent. So every single angle got split in half by those diagonals. They're equal to each other. Okay, any questions about what any of those properties mean? They make sense? Okay, true or false, a rhombus is a parallelogram. True. true. So I can add in my fourth property, which is probably going to say what? All five parallelogram. All five parallelogram properties. True or false, a rhombus is a rectangle. That's false because on a rectangle you have four right angles here, but you don't have that happening here. The right angles are in different places. But both of them are considered to be parallelograms. Does anyone still need the rhombus stuff? All right, and our last one, square. True or false, a square is a rhombus. True, because a rhombus has four congruent sides, so does a square. True or false, a square is a rectangle. True, because it has four right angles. You know a square has four right angles. True or false, a square is a parallelogram. True, because your opposite sides are parallel. So for a square, all we're going to write is that we use all properties. So we use the rectangle properties, we use the rhombus properties, we use the parallelogram properties. Anything that is considered a parallelogram, both parallelogram, rectangle, rhombus, we can use it all on a square. So first thing that I want you to do is I want you to take about two minutes and I want you to go through one through eight and tell me true, false, and in about two minutes we'll go over that. Okay, so here are your answers for one through eight. Take a minute and check. If you got one wrong and you are not sure why it is true or why it is false, then you need to ask and we will discuss it as a class. All right, boys in the back, be checking your answers, please. Yes. Okay, so number four, the reason that's true is because, let me zoom out a little so people can still see because they said that a square is a rhombus. So see how for a square you were able to use all the properties? So if you're able to use rhombus properties, that means that it is a rhombus because it does have four congruent sides. 
It does have diagonals that are perpendicular, but it's just a very specific type of rhombus. Okay, any others that I need to explain on one through eight? Why is seven true? Why is seven true? Because a, like in order to be a parallelogram, you have to have these two sides never intersect, these two sides never intersect. And a square has that happening. And so that's why it's a parallelogram. Yes, Cameron? Why is, why is true false? So... Because on a square, you're able to use every single property, right, of everything that we wrote above. While on a rhombus, like a square is allowed to use rectangle properties. Is a rhombus allowed to use rectangle properties? No. So that means like a rhombus couldn't be a square because a square has other properties that a rhombus can't use. But a square, like the other way around, a square would be a rhombus because it can use its properties. So whenever you're trying to decide on these true falses, think about, can I use these properties? Are they using the same properties as this other shape? Okay, any others? All right. Number 9 through 13, I want you to take a minute and go label what they've given you. And what kind of shape did they give me? A rhombus. So that means that I'm looking at all my rhombus properties. Okay. So they told you that GO is 12. And then they told you that OT is 18. The first thing that they want to know is what is OX? So OT is considered a what? A side, a diagonal, an angle. What is OT considered? It's a diagonal. OT is a diagonal passing through. So that means I need to look at my diagonal properties of a rhombus. So the first thing they tell me for a rhombus is that diagonals are perpendicular, which what does that mean? Like what happens when you have perpendicular? Perpendicular means you have what kind of angle? 90 degree angle. That's what perpendicular means, is that they intersect at a 90 degree angle. So is the fact that they intersect at a 90 degree angle going to help me at all find what OX is? No. So that means that's not the diagonal property that I care about. So like under rhombus, they said diagonals bisect angles. Well, again, is OX an angle? No. So that's not going to help me at all. So what else do I know about the diagonals of a rhombus? Well, so we already went through these two. Yeah, but is that about the diagonals? Oh. No, so that means I need to look at my parallelogram properties now. So if I look up at my parallelogram properties, what did they say about diagonals? They bisect each other. Is that going to help me find what OX is? Yeah. Yes, so what would I do to get OX? Just divide by 2. So you get what and what? 9 and 9. Okay. So you, again, are given a list of all these properties, but you have to kind of go through and do what I just did, where I say, okay, the fact that this is 90 degrees, like that's not going to help me. The fact that they bisect the angles, like that's not helping me. And you just have to continue looking at properties about your diagonals until you find the one that's going to help you. Okay, does that make sense? All right. So we know that OX is 9. XT is 9. Okay. Um, I want you to take 30 seconds and go answer number 11. Look at your properties. <laughs> Has anyone figured it out? What is it? So let's see. Angle OXG is right here. O. X, G. So it's this angle right here. I'm trying to find how many degrees that is. So, uh huh, what were you saying? It's 90 degrees because if you look at your rhombus properties, it says that the diagonals are perpendicular, which means that when they intersect, they intersect at a 90 degree angle. And so I know that every single one of these angles right here are 90 degrees. All right, is it starting to make sense how to use the properties, how to read them? All right, what's our question? Who said no? Hmm? 
So diagonals are always the ones that cross through your shape. So anytime that you see the word diagonal, that's always what they're talking about. So like, we are, but the fact that like the word perpendicular tells you that it's going to be about your angles. Because perpendicular means that you have a right angle, so that's still an angle property. Does that make sense? Yeah, perpendicular means 90 degree angle. So they're just saying whenever the diagonals intersect, they form a 90 degree angle. That's what it means when they see diagonals perpendicular. So does that make sense why we use that one now? Is it just practice kind of? Okay. All right, um, GT, what property is going to help me find GT? All right, GO, and so what property lets me say that this is 12? Well, these aren't opposite. So if it's a rhombus, look at your properties. What did it say about the sides? Four congruent sides. So because I know that I have four congruent sides, I know that every single one of these are 12. Any questions on that? Okay, so now they want me to solve for GX, which is right here. Okay, GX is part of a diagonal, so I want to look at my diagonal properties. Okay, so one of my properties for a rhombus diagonal is that diagonals are perpendicular, which that means you have a 90 degree angle. Is a 90 degree angle going to help me find what GX is? No, because an angle, what does that tell you about a side? They're two completely different things. The next thing says that diagonals bisect angles. So is that going to help me find what this is? The fact that your angles get bisected? This isn't an angle, so that's not going to help me at all. All right. Um, so up at parallelogram, what did they say about parallelogram diagonals? That they do what? They bisect each other. So that one might help me, but do we have any idea what GA is? No. So the only way you could use that property is if you already knew what GA was. Okay? So right now, none of these are going to help me. So sometimes you might not actually be using a property. Sometimes you might have to think about your previous knowledge. So if I were to look at this triangle right here, what kind of triangle is that? It's a right triangle. We have two sides of my three-sided triangle. What can you always use to find the third side on a right triangle? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay. So take a minute and set up what you think your A squared plus B squared equals C squared equation would be. This is 12, yes, but the, those are only talking about the sides. These aren't sides. These are diagonals. Okay. So we're looking for this, so we're going to call that x squared. We're about to get there. I would read your directions. Okay, so I have x squared plus what? 9 squared equals 12 squared. Okay, we don't have any calculators in here right now, so we'll do this together. X squared, 9 squared is 81. 81. 12 squared. Okay, what would I do from there? Okay. So I get X squared equals what? Hmm? 63. Okay. So if I were to take the square root of 63 you would end up getting a decimal. But what does it say in your directions? Leave it as a simplified radical. So remember, that means if it's a decimal, you have to do your factor tree. Yep. Yeah. Okay, we're all good on why we're doing Pythagorean theorem, right? Because we have this right triangle here, because that middle is 90 degrees, so I'm given two sides. So to find the third side, we always do Pythagorean theorem on a right triangle. Okay. So I have some factors of 3 and 21. What does 21 go to? 7 and 3. Seven and three. Mm -hmm. 
So because I have a pair of threes, that goes on the outside. And then my seven would go on the inside. And do we want to go over one more time how we got GX? Like all the steps? Okay. So there were no properties that were going to help me. So I instead had to think about what I've known previously. And I know that any right triangle, I can always do Pythagorean theorem. So I could do x squared plus 9 squared equals 12 squared. And then I would go do my Pythagorean theorem. And then they said, leave it in simplified radicals. So that's why I did that rather than a decimal. But that gave me what this was, because that was my missing side on my right triangle. Okay. Questions? All right. Uh, number three, or the third section, our picture is missing, so let's draw it real fast. So it should look like this. Should look like that. I want you all to go try 14 through 17 on your own. Look at your rectangle properties. Think about what's going to help you. If you're looking at sides, think about what your side properties are. If you're looking at angles, think about what your angle properties are. This one? First is I would always go label what they've given you about your picture and then start looking at what properties are going to help you either solve for X or solve for a missing link. Let's start listening. Okay, they told you that WZ was 6X plus 3. They told you that XY was 3X plus 12. Okay, what property is going to help you solve for X? Like, what do you know about these parallel. two sides? Mm -hmm. They are parallel and they are congruent. congruent. So the fact that they're congruent, I can say 6x plus 3 equals 3x plus 12. That's how I can set up my equation to solve for x. Okay. We're good on that. Okay, so then I need to move my x's to the same side. So I'm going to move that 3x. So 6x minus 3x, I get 3x plus 3 equals 12. Take away the 3. So you would get 3x equals what? 12 minus 3, you get 9. Thank you. And your last step would be to divide by 3. Because I subtracted 3. I just didn't have room. Okay? So you get that x is 3. So now that you have what x is, you should probably do what with it? Plug it in. So 6 times 3, you get 18. Plus 3, you get 21. So that means xy is also 21. Okay, anyone want me to re-go through the steps? So because these were congruent, I could say that these two are equal to each other. That's where I got my equation from. And then once I solved for x, I just plugged it back in. Do we feel good about that one? Okay. Um, 15, wy is 32. wy is considered a what? Side, angle, or diagonal? wy is a side, angle, or diagonal? It's a diagonal, so that means I'm going to look at my diagonal properties, okay? For rectangle, they said that diagonals are what? Congruent. So if WY is 32, that means that what else is 32? So XZ is 32. This whole thing is 32, okay? But they only want what ZT is. So I need to look back at my properties. What property is going to help me find what ZT is? So ZX, the whole thing is 32. 
Can I only use those two rectangle properties? You can also use your parallelogram properties. So what did they say on parallelograms about diagonals? They bisect each other, which means that it does what? Split it in half. So since this is 32, I would do 32 divided by 2, and that would give you 16 and 16. Okay, so again, on a rectangle, it said that if this was 32, that meant that this was 32. And then because it's a parallelogram also, that means I'm able to split it in half. So 16, 16. Okay. W, Z, Y, that one's easy. How many degrees is that? Angles W, Z, Y. 90 90 degrees, because since it's a rectangle, we're going to look at our angle properties, which said you had four right angles. So because this is a right angle, that means it's just 90 degrees. Okay. And last one, TWZ. Oh, my God, what is happening over there? TWZ right here is 70. Okay. We know that this whole angle is how much? 90 because you have that on a rectangle, it's always 90 degrees. So then they want to know what TWX is. So TWX is this angle here. So how would you find what that little angle is? Yep, I know your total is 90. That's 70, so the other part would have to be 20. So you pretty much have, like, all these examples, do you see how you've pretty much had the answers here? It's just like you kind of have to think about which one are you using and what does that mean that I can do to solve? Yeah? So, again, you're not going to have to memorize any of these properties. You just have to make sure that you're good on how to use them. Okay? 20 because this total is 90 degrees because that's what my rectangle property said. And so since that part's 70, 90 minus 70, 20. Okay. All right. Um, I want y'all to go try 18 through 23. Take about two minutes. See what you can do. On that angle OGA, which if you were to trace it, OGA is that corner right there. They said that that is 35 degrees. Okay. So since all of these are angles, that means I'm only looking at all of my angle properties. So on your rhombus part, what was one thing that they said about the angles? Mm -hmm. So your diagonals bisect the angles. So that means if this is 35, what else would be 35? The other side. Mm -hmm. So I know that that diagonal bisected this. So that meant that these two were equal. Are we good so far on that? Okay, what else did they say about rhombus angles? So what other property on rhombus gives you some information about your angles? So we've already done number three. So out of one and two, which one's going to give me some more angle info? Uh-huh. So number two says that diagonals are perpendicular, meaning that they form those 90-degree angles. Okay, so I can go add in my 90-degree angles here. Good on that? Okay. Then, is there anything else that they say about the angles? On a rhombus, is there anything else that they say that we haven't already said? No. Nope. So that means that now I need to go up and look at my parallelogram properties. Okay, what did they say about angles here? Opposite angles are congruent. So... If this is 35 and 35, what are these two angles? 35 and 35. So are you starting to see, like, the more we do this, are you seeing how you just have to go through and read each one and kind of be like, okay, I can use this. No, I can't use this. So now let's go look at the parallelogram. Like, it's just constantly reading your properties and using them. Okay? All right. So now the last things that I need to find are these angles here. So what other shape do you see in that rhombus? There's another shape that's in there. 
you have some triangles. So you know that the three angles of a triangle add up to how many degrees? 180. 180. So 90 plus 35 minus 180, that's how you would get that this angle here is 55 because 55 plus 90 plus 35 all adds up to 180. So are we good on where that 55 came from? Okay. So what would this other side be? 55, again, because we had a property that said that the diagonals bisect your angles. That's what it said on number three here, diagonals bisect the angles. And then again, because it's a parallelogram, we know that the opposite angles are congruent. So what would these be? 55 and 55. So we have officially found all of our angles. Okay. All right. So take a minute and go fill those in. So angle TGA was how many degrees? 35. Angle GXO? 90. Angle GXT? 90. Angle GTO? 90. So angle GTO, that's this angle here, so 55. Is everyone good on how to find where the angle is when it's three letters? Okay. Yeah, so you just trace it. So like OAT, O-A-T, it's this whole angle. So 35 and 35, that's how much? 70. 70. And then G-O-A, that would be a total of how much? 28. 28? No, there's nothing on here that is even close to 20. So angle GOA is this whole angle right here. So it's this corner, yep, 110. So that's how you find it, is you always say GOA, and you look at what corner you just created, you just created that corner. So 55 and 55, 110. Does that make sense? All right, almost done. Okay, number 24 and 25 and 26, they have given me a what? A square, a square which means that you can use what? All properties. All properties. So rectangle, rhombus, and parallelogram. So they told me that LC is 13. So if they want to know what LA is, LA is a what? A side. So what's something you know about the sides of a square? They are all equal. So I know LA is 13. Okay. CA is a what? A diagonal. So let's look at our properties. They said diagonals bisect the angles. That's not going to help me find what CA is. Diagonals are perpendicular. That just means 90. That's not going to help me. Okay. Uh, diagonals are congruent. That's not going to help me because I don't know what either one is. Diagonals bisect each other. That's not going to help me because I don't know all that. So once you've gone through all your diagonals, you have to start thinking about what else is going to help me here. So if it's a square, what do you know about all the angles? They're all the same and they're all how much? Hmm? How many degrees? So I just want to know, you have these angles. These angles are how many degrees? 90. Okay. So now, do you see how you have this right triangle? What can we always do to solve for a missing side of a right triangle? Pythagorean theorem. But because it's a square, we actually have a shortcut we can do. If I know that these two sides are the same, what kind of triangle is that? Is it a 30, 60, 90 or a 45, 45, 90? 45. So remember how it was like 13, 13, 13 root 2? Remember how that was your pattern? But if you forgot that pattern, you could always just do Pythagorean theorem and go simplify your radical. But because that's a 45, 45, 90, you always know that it's going to be whatever, whatever, whatever root 2.
right, and then take a minute and go finish the rest. When you're done, I will come around and stamp it, and we're done for the day. Mm-hmm.